Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today I'll be showing you the Mars Pathfinder. It was a challenge to build something identical to NASA, NASA's Mars Pathfinder, but I did my best. As we all know, stock parts in KSP don't always work or look exactly like parts in real life. Well, you know, spacecraft parts. So I had to improvise. I also apologize, uh, if my voice sounds a little raspy, it's probably because I'm getting sick. I hope not, but <laughs> anyway, now even though I had to severely improvise for KSP's stock parts in order to build the Mars Pathfinder, it got pretty close. I mean, I got pretty close, though with only a few little things that need uh, some ironing out that I'll talk about later. So the first thing I built was the Pathfinder itself. For the entire craft, Pathfinder spacecraft, rocket, and everything, I used a lot of flags. The magic of flags. It came out to, turned out to be really nice. Now, the base of the spacecraft, the one that opens up like a flower, has petals and all that good shit. Other than the petals themselves having a lot of solar panels on them, I tried to build it so the ramps for the for the little rover came out exactly like in real life. However, that, that just wasn't going to work. It was too small, and so I couldn't really fit everything together. So instead of the ramps uh, coming out, yeah, like a piston or something of that nature, I just had them so they swung out in, in position. I would then build the little rover on one of these ramps so that when the thing swung out, the rover swung out with it already positioned to, you know, drive on the surface of Duna. Trust me, I tried to have it where the ramps came out and the little rover stayed right there and then, you know, it popped out and started tr trying to drive away, but it just ended, it ended horribly every time. And like I said before, the power of flags allowed me to build the rest of the spacecraft having like uh, flags that had gold on them so it, it all matched together it was really nice the little base of operations I had like a I, I, I make my own flags or I find them on the internet and I download them I tweak them somehow you know so they're more original you got the JPL flags I found some white like blanket materials uh, I, I put that in the flag folder so I, I could put that all over the uh, actual base of the spacecraft it was really nice pretty cool I couldn't make the rover itself fold down like in real life it just wasn't going to happen, so I just tried to keep it the same way. But I had it so the antenna came up. I mean, that's something, right? Now, granted, in order to make the rover move, I had to put a small wheel inside of it with a little motor because of the fact that the the angle of the of the rover wheels were so steep that there was no traction. But if I had used the traction on the actual rover wheels that come with KSP stock, that, that wouldn't have worked. I had to angle them anyway in order to make the little rover, well... <laughs> Little. little, but it worked out just fine. Um, I actually, f I know, I know a lot of people are gonna say this that the rover itself drives backwards in in what what, what you see. But that's primarily because I always thought it looked better uh, going backwards, right? Uh, it's 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 weird. It's weird. It's like it's it's the the the. The part of the rover that had the scientific instrument in front of it to study rocks and stuff, I always thought should have been the front of the rover. So that's just how I designed it. I mean, you can design it any way you want. I mean, you know, it's your game and all that sort of good. But that's how I that's how I always saw it. Why are you so weird, Vance? I don't know. I was born this way. Now, after I got the craft built, I had to figure out what, what I could use for airbags for stock. Now, stock at this moment in time doesn't have airbags. And of course, you do, you can download a mod for airbags, but I try to keep everything stock so that you know uh, people can follow along with me. If you're wondering what kind of mods I have, just check out the description below. It should cover most of it. But yeah, I try to keep everything stock. But in order to make uh, balloon not balloons, but airbags for KSP, I just ended up using fuel tanks, empty fuel tanks, of course, but fuel tanks nonetheless. I actually wanted this thing to bounce, kind of like the actual Mars Mars uh, Pathfinder did when it hit the ground. I wanted it to bounce. I knew it was gonna blow up, so I looked at it like sacrificial uh, parts. And then after everything settled down and whatnot, I needed some sort of system to eject these sacrificial parts, especially the ones that didn't blow up, so that thing could open up. After a while, it all came together and it looked really nice. So the next part was to build the actual Pathfinder spacecraft. Now I think the spacecraft is like the sixth stage. I don't really know, maybe, but I know there's like five other stages before the actual Pathfinder spacecraft is, you know, let loose into the cosmos. So it's got to be the sixth stage, right? The sixth stage? <laughs> <clears throat> now, the actual spacecraft itself uh, for the real-life NASA Mars Pathfinder is a lot more smushed 
uh, looking, but you know, this is KSP stock we're talking about. So I did my best. It, it looks close. It's close enough, damn it. The next stage under that was supposed to be like a solid fuel rocket booster thing, but I wanted it to look. This was, yeah, th this, this whole spacecraft was more for looks than uh, actual functionality. Even though it did function, it was more for looks. So I know that the rocket underneath of the actual spacecraft was supposed to be a like little solid, solid fuel booster. Now I could have used like a flea or something of that nature, but I, I really, I needed control when it came to fling this thing out into space. So I just made it look like the actual photo using some fairings and then just put a little terrier engine in there so I could have control because I, I wasn't about to do massive calculations so that I could nail it spot on every single time with a solid fuel booster that you have no control over thrust or throttle or anything. Now, the fourth stage, or at least I'm going to call it the fourth stage, um, it actually housed the fairing in Kerbal Space Program. The fairing, it, it doesn't work quite like in real life, so in order to make the rocket look like the actual rocket that housed the Pathfinder, I had to put the fairing on the fourth stage. That way the rest of the rocket uh, could be housed inside the little uh, cubby hole <laughs> and, you know, how to make that work. I also used fairings to build the, uh, the rocket in the very back to make it to make the uh, rocket bell bigger. I thought about using that uh, the the rocket that they use for like the Apollo spacecraft, but it, it just didn't didn't look right, so I opted out. Just built my own. But then came building the rocket itself. For this one, I used a lot of different flags. Well, not well, actually three three different flags. Was it four? Three? I can't remember. But it had that blue aqua green color to it, the same as the rocket Delta rocket, I believe. And yes, I did get the numbers wrong apparently it's not 240 it's something else i couldn't find a texture with that emblem so i had to make my own and so i put in the words the the numbers 240 but anyway it looked cool damn it it looked cool okay i'm sorry it was not correct just looked cool so then you had the nine boosters on the bottom where six of them would light and then halfway through the flight the other three would light. Thankfully they had boosters in stock KSP that were pretty close to the uh, actual originals, uh, almost spot on, so that worked out pretty well. The large uh, rocket itself, I actually had to drain a lot of fuel. It's like phew, three quarters of the way full because, you know, this is Kerbin we're talking about. It doesn't take much to get off of it. And like I said before, this was all for looks rather than functionality, even though it did function. So after everything was said and done, it lifted off beautifully, it tilted nicely. I had to drain some of the solid fuel tank uh, fuel so that, you know, there could, there could be, you know, if this thing was fully fueled, it would probably turn into an SSTO. You just gotta be careful with KSP. So I had to drain some fuel from both the rocket and the boosters in order to make everything work just right. I loved how the fairings came out. They, they, they turned out really well. I mean, the whole ascent was pretty cool. I mean, check this out.
Now I tried spinning, but you know, as we know in KSP, you can't stay spinning when you time warp. So I, it, it was just for that moment. And during landing, dur during the landing at Duna, aka Mars, I ran into a dust storm, which was really cool. This uh, volumetric cloud mod is amazing. Now I know that the the actual spacecraft itself only had like one parachute and one drogue chute, and at the time of testing, I had three of those suckers on there, so I just cut the other ones. It's not exactly great, but like I said in the very beginning of the video, there's going to be some things that would need to be ironed out later. Yeah, but look at this sucker. This is beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. I did a live stream on it on our, um, not, not the, uh, not the spacecraft that you see here, of course. It was a later version, but still it was fun and everybody had a lot of fun. I had everybody telling me that the 240 symbol was wrong and all this other good stuff. So, you know, I learned a few things. But yeah, I know the ramps are a little funky looking. That's just so they can go down after they come out because I had those parts, uh, same vessel interaction, so that they wouldn't clip through. Because when I didn't have them on same vessel interaction, the ramps and stuff, they went, they clipped through the uh, pedals of the Mars Pathfinder and during like the, the bouncy, bumpy part. Parts. didn't didn't bow well so I had to make them same vessel interaction but because of that of course that means that uh, once they swung out after landing I couldn't angle them down like a ramp if they were straight across so I had to kind of kitty corn them a little bit but I mean it, it looks fine it's it's Kerbal damn it it's very Kerbal but it works anyway thank you so much for being a part of this channel and thank you so much for watching if you liked what you saw please leave a like and if you really 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 liked what you saw consider subscribing I upload often at this point in time about once a week and until the massive amount of overtime that they're making me do at the job dies down. If you're interested in supporting the channel, we also have a membership program you can join. If you join, you get cool little badges and emojis and stuff like that next to your name. Pretty cool. Check it out. But anyway, this has been a Kerbal Space Program video. Thank you so much for watching. And again, thank you so much for being a part of this channel. Love you all. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.